give it a few days. Hey, you're a guy. 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 Motorcycle here in India. There's a lot of information out there which says that you can't, but you can. You don't have to go to Karol Bagh and buy a second-hand bike if you don't want to, because bikes are so damn cheap here, brand new. Manu, Manu, come here. What are you doing down there, anyway? What is this on the floor there? Bajra. Bajra. Millet. Okay, she's like eating millets from the ground and they're drying them. I guess this is for roti or something. Bajra ki roti. What do you have to say about me buying a motorcycle? Are you happy? Couldn't care less. She does. She's not happy about it. Be honest. <laughs> I'm not excited at all. She's not excited. It's I'm just excited. A bike. Just it's it's just the bike, people. That's where you're wrong, Manu. <laughs> this bike represents so many things. Like adventure, huh. taking me around India, freedom, to go wherever I want to go, to roam where I want to roam, Manu. That sounds just like my car. Yeah. See, she she's a car person. She wants me to get a what? What should I spend this money on? Get a nano. <laughs> yeah, great idea. I think it's India's smallest and cheapest car, the Nano. Mm. Get that purple one as well. No, no, I love the freedom <laughs> and the adventure of a motorcycle. That is what we're gonna do. You want to come with me? Not really, but I think I'll have to. You have to. Gorov is away in Mumbai, so he can't come. Or else I would have taken Gorov with me. He's the expert. Mm. But come with me. I'll put you through the torture of buying a motorcycle with me. Yeah, okay. Shalom. The government cameras are watching me. Got to keep my head down. Manu, you're not worried about these cameras that are watching us? Not really. They're everywhere. I know. Back in New Zealand, I used to have a—I mean, I do have a Kawasaki Versi 650, and I absolutely love that bike. But let's talk about why and what bike I'm getting, nah? For me, the most important—actually, hang on. Manu drives because she is the most amazing driver I've ever met in my life. She can handle all these roads so well and if you want to see the best parallel parker in India, she is right here. Thank you. Now my criteria for buying a motorcycle is firstly practicality. It's got to be practical. It's got to be comfortable. It's got to be fuel efficient. It's got to be suitable for Indian roads as well so it needs really good suspension. It's got to be able to carry all my bags with me, comfortable and practical. That is my very first criteria. And so for this, it's going to have to be an adventure bike, right? We need the good suspension for these bumpy oh, Indian roads. Without good suspension, it's not a comfortable ride here. I'm also a taller guy, so it can't be a small bike. A lot of bikes here are quite small and that's fine for Indians because they're a little bit shorter than I am, but I need a big roomy bike for my big butt, nah? <laughs> it's true, it's true. Now, so to tickle these boxes, it's gonna have to be an adventure bike. It's gonna offer the room, the comfortable ride, and the suspension that I need here in India. Second thing I need is it should be made in India, right? Like, we should be supporting Indian manufacturers, Indian companies, so I won't be buying an imported bike. It's an Indian made bike. A foreign bike is honestly a waste of time. You don't need a massive engine here. There's no point. You can't go fast on these roads. The maximum I'm going is like 100 kilometers an hour on the open roads. And in the cities, you're only going to hit 50 or 60. You've got to drive really, really safe here. So a huge engine is totally impractical here. And the second point about foreign bikes is you can't get them repaired outside of the major cities here in India. If I brought a Kawasaki here, I'd be really limited in where I can get it repaired. So if I'm traveling to Ladakh or just anywhere off the beaten track, nobody's going to be able to repair it if they have a breakdown. But with the bike I'm going to get, anyone can fix it here on any side of the road, wherever you are. I've broken down in a village here with this bike and, you know, a village guy's been able to fix it for me. So, yeah. Forget foreign bikes, support, make in India. Do you agree? Yeah. Hey, nah? This narrows us down to two brands, Manu. What are the two brands that I could buy with these criteria? Yep. And I'm surprised you even said that. Because nice. I know we're going to the Royal Enfield. <laughs> oh no, you just spoiled it. So there's Royal Enfield or there's KTM. Both are manufactured here in India. 
The KTM Adventure 390 is coming out soon, but the problem with it is it's got a smaller wheelbase than the Himalayan, so it's, it's just a smaller bike. There's less mounting options. What I like about the Himalayan is I can literally just stick my bag on the top and secure it with some, some cables. It's really, really easy. And I've got so much experience with the Himalayan. I must have ridden it like 15,000 kilometers from Delhi to Goa, from Delhi to Ladakh and back through Kashmir. So yeah, it just makes sense for me. And I've done a few things to this bike. I've customized it a little bit. We're nearly at the showroom now. All right, we've made it to the Royal Enfield showroom and this is not sponsored at all. You guys know I don't do brand deals or sponsorships ever. I will not lie to you. I will not try and sell you something, all right? And that means that I can be completely honest with you guys. You don't have to worry about me making up some rubbish about some brand. And guys, do not buy a Royal Enfield just because I am. You need to look at all the options and choose your bike that way, okay? And what I can tell you about Royal Enfield is the service is horrible if you want good service you have to go to their flagship stores like in Khan Market or something these guys behind me at my local dealership they, they just don't reply to my emails even when I'm trying to like order all these extra accessories and all that they just didn't reply it's a nightmare but eventually we got there in the end and the bike's all ready now but yeah service is lacking unless you go to one of their flagship showrooms all right they're in South Delhi I'm not a South Delhi guy I'm a North Delhi guy so no way I'm going to South Delhi just to pick up a bike, so yeah, I'm here at my local. Hi, Hi. how are you? Rajiv. Oh, Oh, wow, Yeah, you Yes, I'm owner. I'm owner. Yeah, I'm owner. Yeah, please. What are you thinking? Why are you laughing? This is you when I'm shopping for clothes. <laughs> You're totally right. Whenever she's shopping for clothes, I just find the seat in H&M or Zara or wherever she is and I just sit on the seat and work on my phone like she is. Now you know how it feels, no? Yeah, but at least I came with you. Yeah, I know. Without, I... And I'm not complaining. No, I appreciate no it. No rush. No rush. Right. Whoa, time. whoa. Best Take wife ever. That's why I married her. No <laughs> issue. Now before we get to buying the bike, if you are a foreigner and you want to come here and you want to buy one of these beautiful machines, you can. There's only one document that you need. You need a proof of address here in India. So you're staying at the hotel, right? That's your proof of address. But you've got to get a document which shows that, okay? So go to the local kind of court area. Go and find the lawyer's chambers and go and talk to them they will help you organize a proof of address. I actually have one, so it's no issue for me. But if you, if you really want to buy a brand new bike, rather than going to Korolbarg and buying second hand, you can do that, okay? And then you can resell it before you leave. You can list it on OLX or something like that, okay? And there's one more document. They need to see your father's name. So you're gonna have to bring a birth certificate or something like that. In an Indian passport, it actually has the father's name, but not in my passport. So I got my birth certificate, which proves who my father is. It's some weird quirk here in India where you have to, you know, always tell who your father is. So Rajiv, yeah. do you get many foreign buyers here? Many foreigners coming to buy bikes from you? No. I'm the first? You are the, you are the first one. <laughs> awesome. Where I live in Delhi, there's not many foreigners at all. Okay. I'm probably the only one. They live in South Delhi. Okay. So they'll be going to like the Khan Market showroom, I think. Yes, Khan Market showroom is already closed uh, some one year back. Oh, it's closed? Yes. But that was the flagship store, so... Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, fine. Don't go to the Khan Market store anymore. Yeah. Shallow. Whoa, here it is. Wow, I'm right here. Wow. Beautiful. So there it is. I got a few accessories. I got the panniers behind me. You really need those for extra storage. Although it's very easy to mount a backpack on the back of this bike. There are so many storage options. I also got the handguards. They are so important when you're on the road and you're going at 80 kilometers an hour and you're heading into bugs, stones, rocks are flying at you. You, you gotta have them. I also asked for the upgraded handlebar, but you can't get that. It's lighter and stronger but the handguards don't fit on it. 
and the barbell ends don't fit on it either. So I couldn't get those two accessories that I wanted. And they didn't give me the travel seat. I asked for a travel seat. The travel seat is very, very important. When I'm traveling like eight hours in one day on this, your butt gets sore. The travel seat will just help you endure longer rides a bit more comfortably. So I don't know, the guy said it wasn't available. So I email Royal Enfield, I'll see if it's available. I'll see if I can buy it myself. If I can just get that seat and then a mobile cell phone holder and get like a, a USB plug put in, I'll be fine. This is the BS4 model and it's got ABS. And ABS is really important. You don't want that front wheel to lock up. Because when it does, that front wheel is gonna fall out from in front of you. And it's happened to me before on the wet. I jammed that front brake so I wouldn't smack into a taxi and yeah, the front wheel just came out from under me and I fell, fell sideways. I was okay because I was wearing all the gear and a helmet and everything and we were going slow anyway. That's the thing about India, you don't need a fast bike here because you don't want to be traveling fast on these roads. It's a bit crazy here. So it's a very, very, very practical bike. But don't just take my word for this, okay? Don't go out and buy it because I brought one. You guys need to go and check out all the options. And if you're a foreigner, I really would not be buying a Royal Enfield overseas. Go and talk to your local mechanic and ask him about all the problems that they have. A mechanic will never advise you to get a Royal Enfield, okay? Plus they're overpriced, so this is gonna cost me half the price in India of what it will cost in New Zealand. Literally the price is double back home in New Zealand. And for that price, you could take like a KLR 650 or the second hand market is so good in New Zealand overseas, so better you go for a car with like a KLR 650 or, or something like that. More bang for your buck and just a more premium quality ride than this. But I'm happy with this, this is the bike that I like and, and that's good for India. All right, time to buy now and the total is 2.5 lakh. And I'll give you a breakdown. So 1.8 lakh for the bike, 15,000 rupees for on-road costs. And then I got full insurance for five years. So if my bike gets stolen, they will fully reimburse me for the bike. It's got theft protection and that's 30,000 rupees. Then we've got the aluminium panniers, 23.5 thousand rupees. The pannier rail, you've got to buy that as well, 3,000 rupees. The handguard, 2,200 rupees. So yeah, that brings us up to basically 2.5 lakh. And you have to take insurance when you buy a motorcycle here in India. You can't buy it without it, it's mandatory. But you don't have to go for full insurance like I did. For half the price of that, you can just take third party insurance. But I mean, it's just 30,000 rupees. It's like, I don't know, 600 bucks for five years and if my bike ever gets stolen or anything, I'll get all my money back. So I've learned that taking warranties here in India is very, very important because so much stuff can happen to whatever you're buying, whether it's a camera or a computer. I've always had warranty issues and I've always been so glad that when I have brought a warranty, it's always come in handy so far. And when I haven't, uh, I really regretted it. Like with this camera, the Panasonic G85. Wish I had a full warranty on this because it's broken three times already. It's just how India is, there's a lot of dust and there's a lot of opportunity for theft here. So it really pays to get full insurance on whatever you buy here or, or, or a full warranty on whatever you buy here in India. And yeah, I'm paying full price, no discount, no nothing, not even a media discount, okay? I haven't asked for anything, I don't want anything because I want to keep this completely honest and I don't want anything to get in the way of, uh, you know, me and you and truth. Truth is the most important thing in life, right? All right, I've just added on the warranty as well, like I was saying. It comes with a two year warranty, but you can extend it up to four years and it's only an extra like 3,500 rupees to do that. So it's nothing and it includes roadside assistance no matter where you are in India. So that's gonna be super helpful if I'm somewhere and I can't find help or a local can't help me, so. And for the servicing, you've gotta get your bike serviced after the first 500 kilometers or one month and that first service is free. Then you've gotta service it after 5,000 kilometers or what was it 45 days or something like that. So yeah, those first two services are always the most important whenever you buy a motorcycle, it doesn't matter what motorcycle you have. Before I head out to Uttarakhand on this bike, I had planned to go to South India actually, to Tamil Nadu, to take it around there, but man, when, when I go back to Delhi, I just felt like staying here for a month in December, just enjoying and just working on editing and just staying up in my office and yeah. I'm gonna get to Tamil Nadu soon and really looking forward to go, coming back to the south. I'm gonna take my motorcycle there. That was the part of the point on, on buying this bike so I can travel more by motorcycle and you know, have that freedom to be able to put it on a train, arrive somewhere in India 
you just load it up for train and just just go. No taxis, no rickshaws. It will really allow me to explore more here in incredible India. So the final total is somewhere around 253,000 rupees. It's around like five and a half thousand New Zealand dollars, maybe four and a half thousand American dollars. This bike retails for about eight thousand New Zealand dollars back home in New Zealand. Basically twice the price with none of the extra accessories that I got. Thank you, bye. Do you know? I'm going to get a bike. I'm going to get a bike. I'm going to get a bike. I'm also his new partner. Acha, new yes. friend. Do you know and what's your name? Ahan. Acha. And my name is Bhagirat. Ah, best friends. Anyway, like I was going to say, I'm home now. I'm damn happy. I feel like a kid at a candy store. And the only thing I noticed straight away was the bite on those ABS brakes. Oi, what are you doing? <laughs> the no. Okay, yeah, you're in. <laughs> the bite on those brakes on the ABS is so... You can't even feel it when you pull the brake. It's not so strong. Hopefully that gets better because it's brand new, so let's see. I give it a few days. I'm going to ask you what to do. Hey? I'm I got to get away from these kids. <laughs> okay, so I just got home and... What did you just tell me, Manu? What do we need to do? Buy sweets. Buy sweets. Actually, as soon as I got to the front gate, the guy goes, where's the sweets? <laughs> and I'm yes, like, Yes, when you hey? come home with a car or a bike, you come home with also a dabba of sweets. Oh, okay. I'll order moti chor ladu no, right now. No, jalebi. No, emarthi. Mm -hmm. I, I like emarthi. Okay, this is better than moti chor. You get both of these and we'll take sarso <laughs> kasag <laughs> maki roti. Okay, done. That's our feast. <laughs> What's your mom doing? Dog with balls. <laughs> <laughs> dog sniffing my butt before. Just bust. Go to the end, bro. Okay, chalo, ho gaya.